Not even the collapse of the terrorist stablecoin was enough to stop the venture capitalists. They keep pouring billions of dollars into the crypto industry. Just this week, Andreessen Horowitz said that it had raised a $4.5 billion crypto fund. That's a lot of money. It's the industry's largest to date, actually, Tim. But you've also seen other crypto initiatives from blockchain startups to crypto firms also snagging billions of dollars in their latest valuation rounds. To discuss what's keeping that VC interest alive and well, it's blockchain venture fund Decasonic founder and CEO Paul Sue joining us from Chicago. Paul, I'm curious how much of this is just deals running on fumes that maybe had been solidified in the last few months before this enormous drawdown versus actual new interest. Uh, thanks for having me again, Tay. What we're seeing is fresh capital from professional investors buying the dip. Mm. Uh, they're optimistic about the long-term innovation of Web3. Uh, there's a flight to quality uh, experience. Investors like Chris Dixon at A16Z. And uh, you know people are bullish about building this next wave of innovation in Web3. What does that next wave of innovation look like, though? Because if we've seen what's happened in recent months, just when it comes to the valuations in crypto, we've seen truly a historic route where people have lost a lot of money. And I think it's fair to say some people have lost faith in at least the crypto promise of Web3. Where are you bullish, Paul? Uh, you know, Wall Street can get innovation incorrect. Um, what's happening in financial markets is independent of innovation adoption. We're very bullish in uh, use cases for blockchain infrastructure uh, that will survive. Adoption in this area is skyrocketing. So uh, use cases such such as uh, gaming and NFTs, open finance. Th these are areas that professional investors are very interested in right now. So money is still coming into the space. In terms of what it's targeting, do you see a shift there? Because following up on Web3, it felt like at the end of last year, for example, everyone was announcing some sort of fundraise and Web3 was one of the bullets. The metaverse, too, was very hot. Do you see a pullback in sort of what is being um, actually trying to be invested in into more maybe conservative, proven areas of the broader crypto sphere? Uh, what we're seeing are fewer monetary distortions. Mm. Uh, high quality talent still gets funding. The categories to be built are still available. Uh, trillion dollar opportunities are still identified by venture capitalists like ourselves. And we're bullish in building that when, when you know, you're, you're talented, when you're a talented founder and you have fewer competitors that are getting stupid money, that, that's uh, tremendously optimistic mm. for, for our situation. Paul, you early in your career were at Zynga, where, and yep. I think, you know, people might remember Zynga as the company behind Farmville and actually I remember having, Zynga. oh yeah, you, Katie, you played a lot of I Farmville in college, Farmville. right? Or high not school? college, not college, high school. After early, college, right? Early high school. Oh, early, early high, school. high school. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks for dating me. <laughs> I don't think, Zynga, I don't think Farmville was even out until I was out of college. Well, uh, Paul, I, I'm wondering though, because if you think about, you know, the Farmville and the, the idea that people could use real money to buy digital goods there. How do you apply what you learned at Zynga with real money, digital goods, and, and bring that to 2022 and beyond, the next generation of the blockchain when it comes to gaming? Uh, absolutely. A lot of gaming uh, uh, inspires tip of the spear product innovation for Web3. So what we did with digital goods, uh, digital worlds, digital currencies are now morphed into uh, the metaverse, NFTs, and, and cryptocurrencies. Uh, a lot of that inspiration is now uh, in a next generation of how we uh, bring this to the mainstream for real non-gaming use cases. Um, a, a lot of the tokenomics uh, that people talk about in our industry reflect good game design, good game economies. So, uh, you know, we, we believe as gaming investors and gaming operators that uh, robust incentive systems to align ecosystems is where the next generation of blockchain web three innovation is happening. And I want to talk about the difference between, you know, crypto native firms, crypto native VC firms specifically coming in and, you know, bringing in fresh capital into the space versus yep. some of the generalist VCs. It feels like, especially last year, again, boom times, we saw a lot of 
generalist VCs, maybe not you know crypto native firms coming into the space. With this big drawdown that we're seeing, you know, there's been a lot of talk about what regulations are going to come out of the terror collapse, for example. Do you think that some of those non-crypto native investment firms are going to pull back a little bit? Uh, bear markets always wash out tourists. Mm. We saw this in 2000 and 2009. Uh, founders uh, uh, generally want to work with value add crypto native investors. That's why Andreessen is raising this record fund. Uh, we saw Dapper Labs raise their $725 million ecosystem fund. We're seeing a lot of growth in ecosystem funds where you uh, pair the value add from a layer one underlying infrastructure to the app builders. We're, we're working with Kadena in this area. Uh, we're seeing a lot of migration of talent from the Terra ecosystem and other ecosystems into Kadena. Uh, Paul, can you talk a little bit about more, more about financial services and the application of blockchain technology in Web3 when it comes to financial services? Uh, absolutely, banking the unbanked, uh, providing financial inclusion, uh, uh, liquid venture capital. The, these are all you know, use cases that a lot of builders are looking to deploy to the mainstream right now. I, I guess one thing that I'm still having trouble understanding is, is and, and maybe it's because this isn't, you know, like a lot of venture capitalists and, and futurists talk about, we're in a period where we're sort of, you know, pre, pre-internet pre in, in the context of Web3 and blockchain, but I'm just having a hard time still seeing real world applications for this technology. So, so when you close your eyes and, and think to the future five, 10 years down the road, like how will our lives be different because of this tech? Uh, it you know, the, the opportunities to hold uh, uh, an asset that uh, uh, holds stable value is a use case that's on the horizon. The, the ability to uh, stake your Ethereum or Bitcoin to go purchase uh, 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 real estate, the ability to, uh, you know, access liquid venture capital are, are three use cases that are being worked on today. All right.